Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So in my last video, I mentioned that I was going to be doing a video on uh, the possibility of doing series works if you've never considered that before. And I've touched on this in a couple of other videos, but I've never really gone into detail. So I thought today might be a good day to do it, especially since my last video was about creating when you're kind of uninspired. This kind of ties into that video. And if you haven't watched that video, I will link to it above so that you can um, check that out if you are interested. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Ellen. I've been a work artist since 2012 um, and I just use this channel to basically give my advice uh, tips on what has worked for me as a working artist and what I have found to be successful um, I'm kind of your guinea pig so uh, things that didn't work for me I share and the things that did work for me I also want to share to save you some of the pain and heartache that I had when I was starting out as a working artist back in 2012 <clears throat> so why series work well, when I started in 2012, I initially wanted to create things that other people would wanna buy. I mean, that's what we wanna do, right? We need to make money and for us to do that, people need to be responsive of what we are creating. And it's kind of counterproductive because if you try to create things that other people want or what you think people want you're constantly gonna, constantly going to be chasing that because you're never going to please everybody um, so i have always found that it's better to create for a small group of people because those people are loyal those people are your people those people um, they will tell their friends about your work they get excited about your work and to me, there's nothing better than connecting with people who are like me. And so from early on, back in 2012, 2013, I started getting into yoga. And uh, it, I just needed something to help kind of calm me down, get me in the right mind, uh, get me in the right mindset that I could do this, you know, it reduced stress. So as I was doing that and I was really kind of getting into yoga, I thought, well, what if I created some yoga pieces? And so it started out just as one um, and I just created basically from what I was feeling at the time. Um, I was really inspired by uh, Rumi, who is a philosopher and poet and um, he, has beautiful quotes on the internet and so I created a yoga piece and I paired it with uh, one of his quotes and yoga was just starting to take off at that point uh, as well there were a lot of yoga studios opening up um, wearing yoga pants if you remember how big yoga pants were that that's when that kind of started happening and and so yoga was kind of on everybody's minds at the time so when i started that first painting i thought well you know i'm think i might create a series of works like this i enjoyed that one so much that i created another one and then i created another one and before i knew it i was like on a roll I didn't have to look at a blank piece of paper anymore and think, what am I going to create? I don't have any idea what people are going to want to buy. And then all that anxiety starts bubbling to the surface again. I sat down at my table. I knew exactly what I was going to do because it helped me to sort of stay on theme. And if you have a series that you are sort of mulling over in your head, then I find, at least for me, the ideas start expanding uh, a lot faster. Um, creatives are known, at least from my perspective, as having so many ideas that it, they just don't know where to start. So, you know, there's one thing about being a creative and then actually laying that down to paper or putting that into practice. But there's another thing about being a creative mind and really just not, you wanna do everything so you don't really know where to begin. Series work can help you sort of hone in uh, your skill set so that you can focus on one particular thing. And that takes 
a lot of the pressure off. And that is how I started getting into series work. I found it very gratifying. I would finish one piece and then I would think, oh, well, you know, this would be good for that theme. Or I would find another quote and then I would think, oh, I could pair this particular painting that I see in my head with this quote. It would go beautifully with this quote. Um, and so people were buying them. They were hanging them up in their yoga studios. Um, I had a major online retailer who took on my work because I had a series of artworks for people who were into yoga and meditation to choose from. And I, I kind of just fell into that and it all stemmed from me needing to really just focus more. I don't know if I've got like ADD, ADHD, I think I might be on that spectrum because it was really the only thing that helped me stay focused. And when I was finished with my series, then I had a whole body of work to share. So when I was done with that series, I started another series. And you kind of know when you're done, you know, you kind of start feeling, okay, I've kind of done all that I can do with this particular thing. So what else can I do? So I started thinking, well, what else am I interested in? What else am I passionate about? Well, at the time, um, I, I think I started my next series a couple of years later, 2015. 15, I think I started my Mother Earth series. I was really into hiking at that time. I still am. Uh, but just being out in nature was really inspiring to me. And just the idea of bringing Mother Earth or Mother Nature to life in my paintings, that generated an entire year long series of works that were really, really well received. Um, they were mixed media pieces. Um, they took a long time for me to finish. I it, it took me about a month to do each one. And I had each of them professionally framed and most of them, not all of them. I think I did 12 in that series. I did one a month for a year. And, you know, I, those, those works of art still i have people coming to me you know here it is 2020 uh still coming to me about those series of our artworks and people were contacting me for interviews over those um, on earth day those paintings get shared over and over and over again so see it's about sort of it, it's about you deciding what is important to you, but then it also helps you connect to your kind of people, the people who are interested in the same things that you are. Environmentalists, um, conservationists, people who um, are advocates for planet Earth, for recycling, you know, that all kind of ties in together. Um, so it, it's really, it, it has helped me out over and over again. When I was done with that series, I started doing, well, I had shoulder surgery, which really kind of, uh, it, it really slowed down my process a little bit. I was having a lot of shoulder pain, um, for about a year before I realized that my right shoulder was seriously, seriously messed up. So... I knew that I wasn't going to be able to continue with my Mother Earth series. And again, it kind of ebbs and flows. It's like, oh, this is great. I can't wait to do more and more. And then as my shoulder pain started to get worse, that sort of led me down this path of, okay, I need to kind of steer away from that. What else can I do? Well, I had to take some time off from painting because I had one doctor tell me that it was just uh, an overuse injury, which is what I thought at the time it wasn't. But he told me that it was so i took like a month off from painting and i started reading and i stumbled across some genealogy that my aunt had given me and realized that i had uh, native american heritage uh, cherokee specifically and so that led me to start really reading about my heritage and um, specifically about spirit animals and how native americans really 
you know, take care of their planet, take care of the animals, and that everything is living, and that we respect everything on the planet. And so the spirit animal part really spoke to me, like deeply. And I thought, I, a spirit animal series, that, that sounds like right up my alley, that's what I need to do next. So I started that series and I worked on that series for five years. I was in a rhythm. I mean, animals, right? You could paint animals your entire art career and you could never finish them all probably. So I knew that this series was not going to be something that, you know, I would run out of ideas. So I just kept kind of going with it. After my shoulder surgery was done and I kind of got back in, in, into working order again where I could paint, it was like nonstop. And I just kept painting and painting and painting. And I thought, well, I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna let these animals tell me when they are ready for me to stop painting them. And lo and behold, you know, five years later, I thought, okay. But as, as I was developing this body of work, I had well over 150 paintings finished for this series. So now I realize that that's extreme probably. Um, I don't know many people who will work on a series for that length of time, but for me, it was exactly what I needed because the more paintings I acquired, uh, I started becoming known as, you know, the spirit animal artist uh, who worked in acrylic inks on Yupo paper. No one was really doing that at the time that I'm aware of, and especially painting animals using very non-traditional colors like I was doing, trying to capture the spirit of that animal is what led me to wanting to use non-traditional colors. And so uh, I don't think that people really saw much of the type of art that I was doing hadn't really been seen very much before. So, uh, so by the time the series kind of started winding down a little bit, this was like in 2018, I started thinking, okay, you know, I think that maybe I need to start moving on to something else. Well, it, it's not that you just, well, okay, I've got all these all these paintings, most of the paintings themselves had sold, but of course I had digital images of everything and I thought the, it makes perfect sense for me to make this into an oracle deck. Um, if you are a tarot card reader or if you are an oracle deck uh, enthusiast, then you know that especially for, um, for tarot cards, you, I think it's 88 cards that you have to have in that deck. So you have to have 88 different, uh, different paintings or art pieces to use as artwork for a tarot deck. An oracle deck is different. You can have as many or as few as you want. There really are no rules when you are doing an oracle deck. Tarot has specific rules that you have to follow. So I knew that an oracle deck was the way that I wanted to go. And as I was creating my spirit animal series, for all of those years, I would write animal symbolism to go along with my paintings. So I paired writing and painting together so that the viewer or the buyer of those paintings could feel further connected to the spirit of that animal that they were purchasing or that print they were buying. So I knew that the next step for me after having all of, of these paintings, all of this series nearly finished, was to do an oracle deck. And that led me to create my oracle deck, um, which I worked and worked and worked on for most of 2018. It was like what I did. So I wrote a book and it has all of my animal symbolism in it. And I spent the rest of 2018 and into 2019 creating, um, creating my deck. So, uh, you know, putting, choosing the images that I wanted 
which I don't even know if you can see because of the light, the, the glare may be just awful. It looks really washed out to me, so I really apologize. Oh, that's better, I think. So yeah, I, so choosing which paintings I wanted to use. Oh, these are upside down, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, half these are upside down. But anyway, if you wanna see these, um, if you're inspired by these and you wanna look at them, they are on Etsy. I will link to them in the description below. But yeah, so this is the type of thing that you can do when you have a series of art. You can create things with it. You, if you don't want to, I mean, it, create an Oracle deck, that was just something that, you know, because that's what I was really into um, that I did, but you could turn your artwork into a book. Um, you could, I mean, I, I feel like I'm kind of put on the spot here. I can't really think of a whole lot of ideas right here off the top of my head, but there are a lot of things that you could do with series work. You could hold a one person show, you know, and have a common theme. You could have somebody help you write. If you're not a writer, you could have somebody help you write about what led you to paint each piece and what that piece means to you. And you could pair that together, writing and painting, put it into a book or, you know, journaling is big. You could, you could do that. You could, I mean, the, really the possibilities are just limited to your imagination. So series work has really, it launched my career and it has really kept me um, it's kept me going creatively where I've not had many dry spells. Everybody does on occasion, but when I work in a series, I always know what my theme is going to be and that puts me in my comfort zone. So then I can just expand and create whatever I want within that theme. So it gives me that level of security, but then it also allows me to be as free as I want. Uh, when I create. So I hope that kind of makes sense to you guys. If you are having some issues um, with knowing what to do, I, I just, I can't re recommend that. I don't, a lot of people don't talk about working in series, which at least artists that I, I see artists that will like create maybe the same thing over and over again, but um, like florals or something like that. But I don't really hear anyone talking about doing it deliberately um, like doing it for a purpose and and maybe creating something bigger with them instead of just you know kind of going through the motions just thinking ahead planning out a little bit and knowing that what you are creating can be something bigger can be part of a collective it doesn't have to just be you know paintings here and there that you know get sold and then you don't think about them anymore after that it, it's something that you can build upon and be proud of and show to the world when you're finished and it's very very gratifying so um I don't know I just thought that you guys might want to have that to sort of mull over if you haven't thought along those lines Again, it's really helped me out. And in case you're curious, I, at this moment, I don't have a series. For the very first time in my art career, I'm really not working on an intentional series. I've been doing more landscapes lately, but I'm kind of in between right now. I'm doing more online classes and learning, and just I, I'm waiting for my muse to sort of whisper in my ear and tell me where I need to go next. But I do fully expect another series to, you know, present itself to me, and then you know I'm excited to know where that's going to lead and what kind of big project that's going to produce. So anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'm really happy to be back. I appreciate all of your previous comments in my last video. It is so nice to know that I'm actually missed. I didn't really think that anyone would really notice on my channel that I was gone for a couple of months. So I was really surprised and very happily so that um, you guys enjoy my videos. I greatly appreciate that and I hope you found this one uh, useful as well. So be safe, stay well, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.